The last parent function that we'll be dealing with in this section is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So this function can be rewritten as y is the absolute value of x. And this is also called the absolute value function. Now this is probably your first time seeing this and it's pretty simple and it's something that we'll be going into a lot more detail in grade 12 but for grade 11 all you have to remember is that any negative value within the absolute value turns positive and any positive value within the absolute value stays as positive. So for example, the absolute value of negative 3 is just equal to positive 3. The absolute value of negative 10 is just equal to positive 10. The absolute value of positive 2 stays as is, it's just basically 2. Positive value of 0 is just 0. Positive value of positive 11 is just equal to positive 11. All right, so basically any negative values turn positive, any positive values stay as they are. So using that information, let's make a table of values for this function and then let's plot it to see what the shape of it looks like. So if x is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is just positive 3. The absolute value of negative 2 is just positive 2. Negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And then the absolute value of all the positive numbers stay as they are. So the absolute value of 1 is just 1, 2, and 3. So taking these points and then plotting it on the graph, let's connect these points to see what the shape would look like. So the shape would look something like this. So that's how the shape of the absolute value function looks like. Now notice how these are lines and it's almost like we took the line y is equal to x, y is equal to x would extend down here and then any negative portion of it we just reflect it up to make it positive. So that's another way you can think about it. But this is the general shape of the graph. You can uh, get that from your table of values. To conclude the video, let's uh, discuss what the domain and range is of the absolute value function. So the domain, the x values, there is no restriction on them. They can be anything. So the x values, x can be an element of real numbers. Now the range, notice how the y value has to be greater than or equal to zero. It's never negative, right? Because as we mentioned, absolute value functions takes any negative values and makes them positive. So the y values will always be positive. So the range, y is an element of real numbers. It can be any number as long as it's greater than or equal to zero.